Today I'm going to show you how to use a acid kit and a touchstone to test some gold items. The first thing came off of a, uh, a pin and it's marked 10 carat. The second piece we'll test isn't marked but it came off a bracelet that said it was 10 carat. And we have a piece that is marked 14 carat which was an earring. And then I have a piece that came out of a ring, very thin piece that we'll be testing. First thing we're going to do is scratch the gold onto the test stone, which is a piece of glass. And we'll do that real quick. Okay, now we're going to test these gold items. This piece here is marked 10 carat. Came off of a pin. This piece is not marked, but it came out of a bracelet that said it was 10 carat. 10 carat is 41.7% gold, and the rest is filler, metals, copper, nickel. Uh, this earring is marked 14 carat, and 14 carat is 58.3% gold. And this piece came out of a ring and isn't marked. We're going to acid test them to figure out what the unmarked ones are. Now you want to be wearing gloves because you are dealing with acid. And acid will burn you. The first thing we're going to use is 10 carat test acid. And you want to put a little drop and streak it across. if I get this piece a little bit better. Now if it's 10 carat, the line will fade but will still be there after a few moments. It's hard to tell on the camera but the line is still there on the 10 carat. It's just barely noticeable. The 14 carat earring line is very strong and the other 10 carat or the other question piece is sort of hard to tell. So it's probably 10 carat. Next we're going to use the 14 carat test acid. And you don't want the acids to touch because they will have a reaction. So we're going to start a little bit lower, start the drop and streak it across. Now the 14 carat acid, the 10 carat lines disappear very quickly. The 14 carat lines are still there and this line is still somewhat there uh, probably up, up here on the beginning I probably had solder off the back of the thing it's a very thin piece so it's most likely is 14 carat now to clean up you wash the acid under water like the faucet to dilute it I always suck up the extra because I don't want to be dripping acid anywhere some things do not react well to acid. Next we're going to test some silver items. And to test silver, you use a silver testing solution, which is this kind of reddish looking stuff. Now this stuff can go bad over time and it turns darker colored when it expires. This is an old bottle that no longer works. It gives negative or false negative readings on everything. I'll show you what the difference is in a second. So this charm here is marked sterling, which is 92.5% silver. And that's the most common silver used in jewelry. So we're going to put a dot on this, a little drop, and the solution will react with the silver and should turn very red. And that's, that proves that there's silver in it. Now this ring is not marked. And we're going to put a drop on it. If there's silver in it, it'll turn red. And 
you can see it's turning green that means there isn't silver in it in it or if there is it's a very low amount and it has a lot of copper or nickel in it now if your solution has gone bad and you tried to do the same test it won't turn red has the same reaction so you have to be careful make sure your solution is hasn't expired or gone bad otherwise you can be throwing away good stuff that actually is silver and that's how you use silver and gold testing acid